Act One of The Tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. Act One. Scene One. Elsinore, a platform before the castle. Francisco at his post. Enter to him Bernardo. Bernardo. Who's there? Francisco. Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Bernardo. Long live the king. Francisco. Bernardo? Bernardo. He. Francisco. You come most carefully upon your hour. Bernardo. Tis now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. Francisco. For this relief much thanks. Tis bitter cold, and I am sick at heart. Bernardo. Have you had quiet guard? Francisco. Not a mouse stirring. Bernardo. Well, good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. Francisco. I think I hear them. Stand ho! Who is there? Enter Horatio and Marcellus. Horatio. Friends to this ground. Marcellus. And liegemen to the Dane. Francisco. Give you good night. Marcellus. O oh, farewell, honest soldier, who hath relieved you. Francisco. Bernardo has my place. Give you good night. Exit. Marcellus. Holla! Bernardo! Bernardo. Say, what is Horatio there? Horatio. A piece of him? Bernardo. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. Marcellus. What, has this thing appeared again to-night? Bernardo. I have seen nothing. Marcellus. Horatio says tis but our fantasy, and will not let belief take hold of him, touching this dreaded sight, twice seen of us. Therefore I have entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of this night, that, if again this apparition come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Horatio. Tush, tush, twill not appear. Bernardo. Sit down a while, and let us once again assail your ears, that are so fortified against our story, what we two knights have seen. Horatio. Well, sit we down, and let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Bernardo. Last night of all, when yon same star that's westward from the pole had made his course to illume that part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, the bell then beating one, Marcellus, peace, break thee off, look where it comes again. Enter ghost, armed, Bernardo, in the same figure, like the king that's dead, Marcellus, thou art a scholar, speak to it, Horatio, Bernardo, looks it not like the king, mark it, Horatio, Horatio, most like, it harrows me with fear and wonder. Bernardo, it would be spoke to. Marcellus, question it, Horatio. Horatio, what art thou that usurpest this time of night together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of very Denmark did sometimes march? By heaven I charge thee, speak. Marcellus, it is offended. Bernardo, see, it stalks away. Horatio, stay, speak, speak, I charge thee, speak. Exit ghost. Marcellus, tis gone, and will not answer. Bernardo, how now, Horatio, you tremble and look pale. Is not this something more than fantasy? What think you on it? Horatio, before my God, I might not this believe without the sensible and true avouch of mine own eyes. Marcellus, is it not like the king? Horatio, as thou art to thyself, such was the very armor he had on, when he the ambitious Norway combated, so frowned he once when, in an angry parley, he smote the sledded Polacks on the ice. Tis strange. Marcellus, thus twice before, and jump at this dead hour, with martial stock hath he gone by our watch. Horatio, and what particular thought to work I know not, but in the gross and scope of my opinion this bodes some strange eruption to our state. Marcellus, good, now, sit down, and tell me, he that knows, why this same strict and most observant watch 
so nightly toils the subject of the land and why such daily cast of brazen cannon and foreign mart for implements of war why such impress of shipwrights whose sore task does not divide the sunday from the week what might be toward that this sweaty haste doth make the night joint labourer with the day who is it that can inform me horatio that can i at least the whisper goes so our last king whose image even but now appeared to us was as you know by fortinbras of norway thereto pricked on by a most emulet pride dared to the combat in which our valiant hamlet for so this side of our known world esteemed him did slay this fortinbras who by a sealed compact well ratified by law and heraldry did forfeit with his life all those his lands which he stood seized of to the conqueror against the which a moiety competent was gauged by our king which had returned to the inheritance of fortinbras had he been vanquisher as by the same covenant and carriage of the article designed his fell to hamlet now sir young fortinbras of unimproved metal hot and full hath in the skirts of norway here and there sharked up a list of lawless resolutes for food and diet to some enterprise that hath a stomach in it which is no other as it doth well appear unto our state but to recover of us by strong hand and terms compulsatory those foresaid lands so by his father lost and this i take it is the main motive of our preparations the source of this our watch and the chief head of this post haste and rummage in the land bernardo i think it be no other but e'en so well may it sort that this portentous figure comes armed through our watch so like the king that was and is the question of these wars horatio a mote it is to trouble the mind's eye in the most high and palmy state of rome a little ere the mightiest julius fell the grave stood tenantless and the sheeted dead did squeak and gibber in the roman streets as stars with trains of fire and dews of blood disasters in the sun and the moist star upon whose influence neptune's empire stands was sick almost to doomsday with eclipse and even the like precurse of fierce events as harbingers preceding still the fates and prologue to the omen coming on have heaven and earth together demonstrated unto our climature and countrymen but soft behold lo where it comes again re-enter ghost i'll cross it though it blast me stay illusion if thou hast any sound or use of voice speak to me if there be any good thing to be done that may to thee do ease and race to me speak to me if thou art privy to thy country's fate which happily foreknowing may avoid o oh, speak or if thou hast abhorred in thy life exhorted treasure in the womb of earth for which they say you spirits oft walk in death the cock crows speak of it stay and speak stop it marcellus marcellus shall i strike it with my partisan horatio do if it will not stand bernardo tis here horatio tis here marcellus tis gone exit ghost we do it wrong being so majestical to offer it the show of violence for it is as the air invulnerable and our vain blows malicious mockery bernardo it was about to speak when the cock crew horatio and then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons i have heard the cock that is the trumpet to the morn doth with his lofty and shrill sounding throat awake the god of day and at his warning whether in sea or fire in earth or air the extravagant and erring spirit hies to his confine and of the truth herein this present object made probation marcellus it faded on the crowing of the cock some say that ever against that season comes wherein our saviour's birth is celebrated the bird of dawning singeth all night long and then they say no spirit dare stir abroad the nights are wholesome then no planets strike 
no fairy takes, nor witch hath power to charm. So hallowed and so gracious is the time. Horatio. So have I heard, and do in part believe it. But look, the morn, in russet mantle clad, walks o'er the dew on yon high eastward hill. Break we our watch up, and by my advice let us impart what we have seen to-night unto young Hamlet, for upon my life this spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Do you consent we shall acquaint him with it, as needful in our loves, fitting our duty? Marcellus, let's do it, I pray, and I this morning know where we shall find him most conveniently. Exeunt. Scene two. Elsinore, a room of state in the castle. Enter the king, queen, Hamlet, Polonius, Laertes, Voltimond, Cornelius, lords and attendant. King, though yet of Hamlet our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us be fitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves therefore our sometime sister now our queen the imperial jointress to this warlike state have we as twere with a defeated joy with an auspicious and one dropping eye with mirth in funeral and with dirge in marriage, in equal scale weighing delight and dole, taken to wife. Nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along, or all our thanks. Now follows, that you know young Fortinbra, holding a weak supposal of our worth, or thinking by our late dear brother's death, our state to be disjoint and out of frame, Colleagued with this dream of his advantage, he hath not failed to pester us with message, importing the surrender of those lands lost by his father, with all bonds of law, to our most valiant brother. So much for him. Now, for ourself, and for this time of meeting, thus much the business is, we have here writ to Norway, uncle of young Fortinbra, who, impotent and bed-rid scarcely hears of this his nephew's purpose to suppress his further gate herein in that the levies the lists and full proportions are all made out of his subject and we here dispatch you good cornelius and you voltimond for bearers of this greeting to old norway giving to you no further personal power to business with the king more than the scope of these dilated articles allow. Farewell, and let your haste commend your duty. Cornelius and Voltimond, in that and all things will we show our duty. King, we doubt it nothing. Heartily farewell. Exunt Voltimond and Cornelius. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is it, Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane, and lose your voice. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be my offer, not thy asking? The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth, than is the throne of Denmark to thy father. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? Laertes, dread my lord, your leave and favour to return to France, from whence though willingly I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation, yet now, I must confess, that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France, and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. King, have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? Polonius, he hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave by laboursome petition, and at last upon his will I sealed my hard consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. King, take thy fair hour, Laertes, time be thine, and thy best graces spend it at thy will. But now, my cousin Hamlet, 
and my son. Hamlet, aside, a little more than kin, and less than kind. King, how is it that the clouds still hang on you? Hamlet, not so, my lord, I am too much in the sun. Queen, good Hamlet, cast thy nighted colour off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not for ever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest tis common, all that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Hamlet. Ay, madam, it is common. Queen. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Hamlet. Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy susperition of forced breath, no, nor the fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected haviour of the visage, together with all forms, moods, shows of grief, that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play, but I have that within which passeth show, these but the trappings and the suits of woe. King, tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father, that father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven, a heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled for what we know must be, and is as common as any the most vulgar thing to sense. Why should we, in our peevish opposition, take it to heart? Fee! Tis a fault to heaven, a fault against the dead, a fault to nature, to reason most absurd, whose common theme is death of fathers, and who still hath cried from the first course till he that died to-day, this must be so. We pray you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father, for let the world take note, you are the most immediate to our throne, and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart toward you. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. And we beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Queen, let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. Hamlet, I shall in all my best obey you, madam. King, why, tis a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come, this gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. In grace whereof, no jocund health that Denmark drinks to-day, but the great cannon to the clouds shall tell, and the king's rouse to heaven shalt brute again, respeaking earthly thunder. Come away, exunt all but Hamlet. Hamlet. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw and resolve itself into a dew, or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon gainst self-slaughter. O oh God, O oh God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fee on it, O oh, fee, tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed things rank and gross in nature, possess it merely, that it should come to this. But two months dead, nay, not so much, not two, so excellent a king that was to this hyperion to a satyr so loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly heaven and earth 
must I remember? Why, she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet within a month let me not think on it. Frailty thy name is woman. A little month, or ere those shoes were old, with which she followed my poor father's body like Niobe. All tears. Why, she, even she, O oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with mine uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules, within a month, ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes, she married, oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Enter Horatio, Marcellus, and Bernardo. Horatio, hail to your lordship, Hamlet. I am glad to see you well, Horatio, or I do forget myself. Horatio, the same, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Hamlet. Sir, my good friend, I'll change that name with you. And what make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus? Marcellus. My good lord. Hamlet. I am very glad to see you. Good even, sir. But what, in faith, make you from Wittenberg? Horatio. A truant disposition, good my lord. Hamlet. I would not hear your enemy say so nor shall you do my ear that violence, to make it truster of your own report against yourself. I know you are no truant, but what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. Horatio. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. Hamlet. I prithee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Horatio. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Hamlet. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral-baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage-tables. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I had seen that day, Horatio. My father. Methinks I see my father. Horatio. Where, my lord? Hamlet. In my mind's eye, Horatio. Horatio, I saw him once. He was a goodly king. Hamlet, he was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. Horatio, my lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Hamlet, saw who? Horatio, my lord, the king your father. Hamlet, the king my father? Horatio, season your admiration for a while with an attendant ear, till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. Hamlet, for God's love let me hear. Horatio, two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch, in the dead vast and middle of the night, been thus encountered, a figure like your father, armed at point exactly, cap a pea appears before them, and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked by their oppressed and fear-surprised eyes within his truncheon's length, whilst they, distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear, stand dumb and speak not to him. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did. And I with them the third night kept the watch whereas they had delivered both in time form of the thing each word made true and good the apparition comes i knew your father these hands are not more like hamlet but where was this marcellus my lord upon the platform where we watched hamlet did you not speak to it horatio my lord i did but answer made it none Yet once methought it lifted up it head and did address itself to motion, like as it would speak, 
but even then the morning cock crew loud and at the sound it shrunk in haste away and vanished from our sight hamlet tis very strange horatio as i do live my honoured lord tis true and we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it hamlet indeed indeed sirs but this troubles me hold you the watch to-night marcellus and bernardo we do my lord hamlet armed say you both armed my lord hamlet from top to toe both my lord from head to foot hamlet then saw you not his face horatio oh yes my lord he wore his beaver up hamlet what looked he frowningly horatio a countenance more in sorrow than in anger hamlet pale or red horatio nay very pale hamlet and fixed his eyes upon you horatio most constantly hamlet i would i had been there horatio it would have much amazed you hamlet very like very like stayed it long horatio while one with moderate haste might tell a hundred marcellus and bernardo longer longer horatio not when i saw it hamlet his beard was grizzled no horatio it was as i have seen it in his life a sable silvered hamlet i will watch to-night perchance twill walk again horatio i warrant it will hamlet if it assume my noble father's person i'll speak to it though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace i pray you all if you have hitherto concealed this sight let it be tenable in your silence still and whatsoever else shall hap to-night give it an understanding but no tongue i will requite your loves so fare ye well upon the platform twixt eleven and twelve i'll visit you all our duty to your honour hamlet your loves as mine to you farewell exeunt horatio marcellus and bernardo my father's spirit in arms all is not well i doubt some foul play would the night were come till then sit still my soul foul deeds will rise though all the earth o'erwhelm them to men's eyes exit scene three a room in polonius's house enter laertes and ophelia laertes my necessaries are embarked farewell and sister as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant do not sleep but let me hear from you ophelia do you doubt that laertes for hamlet and the trifling of his favour hold it a fashion and a toy in blood a violet in the youth of primy nature forward not permanent sweet not lasting the perfume and suppliance of a minute no more Ophelia, no more but so? Laertes, think it no more. For nature, crescent, does not grow alone, in thews and bulk, but as this temple waxes, the inward service of the mind and soul grows wide withal. Perhaps he loves you now, and now no soil nor cotel doth besmirch the virtue of his will, but you must fear his greatness weighed, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state, and therefore must his choice be circumscribed unto the voice and yielding of that body whereof he is the head. Then, if he says he loves you, it fits your wisdom so far to believe it, as he in his particular act and place may give his saying deed which is no further than the main voice of denmark goes with all then weigh what loss your honour may sustain if with too credent ear you list his songs or lose your heart 
or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity fear it ophelia fear it my dear sister and keep you in the rear of your affection out of the shot and danger of desire the cheriest maid is prodigal enough if she unmask her beauty to the moon virtue itself scopes not calumnious strokes the canker galls the infants of the spring too oft before their buttons be disclosed and in the morn and liquid dew of youth contagious blastments are most imminent be wary then best safety lies in fear youth to itself rebels though none else near ophelia i shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart but good my brother do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst like a puffed and reckless libertine himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. Laertes, oh, fear me not. I stay too long, but here my father comes. Enter Polonius. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion smiles upon a second leave. Polonius. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee, laying his hand on Laertes' head. And these few precepts in thy memory, look thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, Grapple them unto thy soul with hoops of steel, But do not dull thy palm with entertainment Of each new-hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, But, being in, bear it that the opposed may beware of thee give every man thine ear but few thy voice take each man censure but reserve thy judgment costly thy habit as thy purse can buy but not expressed in fancy rich not gaudy for the apparel oft proclaims the man and they in france of the best rank and station are most select and generous chief in that neither a borrower nor a lender be for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing season this in thee. Laertes, most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. Polonius, the time invites you, Go, your servants tend. Laertes, farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I have said to you. Ophelia, tis in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Laertes, farewell. Exit. Polonius, what is it, Ophelia? He hath said to you. Ophelia, so please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Polonius, Mary, well be thought, tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous, if it be so, as so tis put on me, and that in way of caution. I must tell you, you do not understand yourself so clearly as it behooves my daughter and your honour. What is between you? Give me up the truth. Ophelia, he hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Polonius, affection? Pooh, you speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? Ophelia, I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Polonius, Mary, I'll teach you. Think yourself a baby, that you have taken these tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or, not to crack the wind of the poor phrase, 
wronging it thus, you'll tender me a fool. Ophelia. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honourable fashion. Polonius. Ay, fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. Ophelia. And hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. Polonius. Ay, springes to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns, how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, daughter, giving more light than heat, extinct in both, even in their promise, as it is a making, you must not take for fire. From this time be something scanter of your maiden presence. Set your entreatments at a higher rate than a command to parley. For Lord Hamlet, believe so much in him that he is young, and with a larger tether may he walk than may be given you. In few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows, for they are brokers, not of that dye which their investments show, but mere implorators of unholy suits, breathing like sanctified and pious bauds, the better to beguile. This is for all, I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you, come your ways. Ophelia. I shall obey, my lord. Exeunt. Scene four. The platform. Enter Hamlet, Horatio, and Marcellus. Hamlet. The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. Horatio, it is a nipping and an eager air. Hamlet, what hour now? Horatio, I think it lacks of twelve. Marcellus, no, it is struck. Horatio, indeed? I heard it not. Then draws near the season wherein the spirit held his wont to walk. A flourish of trumpets, an ordnance shot off within. What is this mean, my lord? Hamlet, the king doth wake to-night and takes his rouse, keeps wassail and the swaggering up spring reels, and as he drains his draughts of greenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Horatio, is it a custom? Hamlet, ay, Mary ist, but to my mind, though I am native here, and to the manner born, it is a custom more honoured in the breach than the observance. This heavy-headed revel east and west makes us traduced and taxed of other nations. They cleep us drunkards, and with swinish phrase soil our addition, and indeed it takes from our achievements, though performed at height, the pith and marrow of our attribute. So oft it chances in particular men that, for some vicious mole of nature in them, as in their birth, wherein they are not guilty, since nature cannot choose his origin, by the o'ergrowth of some complexion, oft breaking down the pales and forts of reason, or by some habit, that too much o'er leavens the form of plausive manners. That these men, carrying, I say, the stamp of one defect, being nature's livery, or fortune's star, their virtues else, be they as pure as grace, as infinite as man may undergo, shall in the general censure take corruption from that particular fault. The dram of eel doth all the noble substance often doubt to his own scandal. Horatio. Look, my lord, it comes. Enter ghost. Hamlet. Angels and ministers of grace, defend us. Be thou a spirit of health, or goblin damned. Bring with the airs from heaven or blasts from hell. Be thy intents wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, king, father, royal Dane. Oh, answer me. Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell why thy canonized bones, hearsed in death, have burst their cerements. Why the sepulchre wherein we saw thee quietly inurned hath oped his ponderous and marble jaws to cast thee up again? What may this mean that thou, 
dead course again in complete steel revisitest thus the glimpses of the moon making night hideous and we fools of nature so horridly to shake our disposition with thoughts beyond the reaches of our souls say why is this wherefore what should we do ghost beckons hamlet horatio it beckons you to go away with it as if some impartment did desire to you alone marcellus look with what courteous action it waves you to a more removed ground but do not go with it horatio no by no means hamlet it will not speak <sighs> then will i follow it horatio do not my lord hamlet why what should be the fear i do not set my life at a pin's fee and for my soul what can it do to that being a thing immortal as itself it waves me forth again i'll follow it horatio what if it tempt you toward the flood my lord or to the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles o'er his base into the sea and there assume some other horrible form which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness think of it the very place puts toys of desperation without more motive into every brain that looks so many fathoms to the sea and hears it roar beneath hamlet it waves me still go on i'll follow thee marcellus you shall not go my lord hamlet hold off your hands horatio be ruled you shall not go hamlet my fate cries out and makes each petty artery in this body as hardy as the nemean lion's nerve ghost beckons still am i called unhand me gentlemen breaking free from them by heaven i'll make a ghost of him that lets me i say away go on i'll follow thee exeunt ghost and hamlet horatio he waxes desperate with imagination marcellus let's follow tis not fit thus to obey him horatio have after to what issue will this come marcellus something is rotten in the state of denmark horatio heaven will direct it marcellus nay let's follow him exeunt scene five a more remote part of the castle enter ghost and hamlet hamlet whither wilt thou lead me speak i'll go no further ghost mark me hamlet i will ghost my hour is almost come when i to sulphurous and tormenting flames must render up myself hamlet alas poor ghost ghost pity me not but lend thy serious hearing to what i shall unfold hamlet speak i am bound to hear ghost so art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear hamlet what ghost i am thy father's spirit doomed for a certain term to walk the night and for the day confined to waste in fires till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away but that i am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house i could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul freeze thy young blood make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres thy knotted and combined locks to part and each particular hair to stand on end like quills upon the fretful porcupine but this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood list list o oh, list if thou didst ever thy dear father love hamlet o oh, god ghost revenge his foul and most unnatural murder hamlet murder ghost murder most foul as in the best it is but this most foul strange and unnatural hamlet haste me to know it that i with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love may sweep to my revenge ghost i find thee apt 
and duller shouldst thou be than the fat weed that rots itself in ease on lethe wharf. Wouldst thou not stir in this? Now, Hamlet, here, tis given out that, sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. So the whole ear of Denmark is by a forged process of my death rankly abused. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Hamlet, oh, my prophetic soul, mine uncle. Ghost, I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, O oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce, one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. O oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there from me, whose love was of that dignity that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage, and to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. But virtue, as it never will be moved, though lewdness courted in a shape of heaven, so lust, though to a radiant angel linked, will sate itself in a celestial bed and prey on garbage. But soft, methinks I scent the morning air, brief let me be, sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed hebanon in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man, that, swift as quicksilver, it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body, and with a sudden vigor it doth possess, and curd, like eager droppings into milk, the thin and wholesome blood, so did it mine. And a most instant tetter barked about, most lazar-like, with vile and loathsome crust, all my smooth body. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, unhouseled, disappointed, unannaled, no reckoning made but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible, oh, horrible, most horrible, if thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury in damned incest. But howsoever thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught, Leave her to heaven, and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge, to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. The glow-worm shows the matan to be near, and gins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu, adieu. Hamlet, remember me. Exit. Hamlet. Oh, oh, you host of heaven, oh, earth! What else? And shall I couple hell, O oh fee? Hold my heart. And you, my sinews, grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee? Ay, thou poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe, remember thee. Yea, from the table of my memory I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all saws of books, all forms, all pressures past, that youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven. Oh, most pernicious woman! Oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain! My tables, meet it, is I set it down that one may smile, and smile and be a villain. At least I am sure it may be so in Denmark. Writing. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my word. It is adieu, adieu. Remember me.
I have sworn it. Horatio, within. My lord, my lord. Marcellus, within. Lord Hamlet. Horatio, within. Heaven secure him. Hamlet, so be it. Marcellus, within. Hello, ho, ho, my lord. Hamlet, hello, ho, ho, boy. Come, bird, come. Enter Horatio and Marcellus. Marcellus, how is it, my noble lord? Horatio, what news, my lord? Hamlet, oh, wonderful. Horatio, good, my lord, tell it. Hamlet, no, you'll reveal it. Horatio, not I, my lord, by heaven. Marcellus, nor I, my lord. Hamlet, how say you then? Would heart of man once think it? But you'll be secret? Horatio and Marcellus, I by heaven, my lord. Hamlet, there's ne'er a villain dwelling in all Denmark, but he's an errant knave. Horatio, there needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. Hamlet, why right? You are in the right. And so, without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we shake hands and part. You as your business and desire shall point you, for every man hath business and desire such as it is. And for my own poor part, look you, I'll go pray. Horatio, these are but wild and whirling words, my lord. Hamlet, I'm sorry they offend you, heartily. Yes, faith, heartily. Horatio, there's no offence, my lord. Hamlet, yes, by St. Patrick, but there is Horatio, and much offence, too, touching this vision, too. It is an honest ghost, that let me tell you for your desire to know what is between us, or master it as you may. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars, and soldiers, give me one poor request. Horatio, what is it, my lord, we will? Hamlet, never make known what you have seen to-night. Horatio and Marcellus, my lord, we will not. Hamlet, nay, but swear it. Horatio, in faith, my lord, not I. Marcellus, nor I, my lord, in faith. Hamlet, upon my sword. Marcellus, we have sworn, my lord, already. Hamlet, indeed, upon my sword, indeed. Ghost, beneath. Swear. Hamlet, ha, ha, boy, sayst thou so? Art thou there, true penny? Come on, you hear this fellow in the cellarage. Consent to swear. Horatio, propose the oath, my lord. Hamlet, never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword. Ghost, beneath. Swear. Hamlet, hic et uic, then we'll shift our ground. Come hither, gentlemen, and lay your hands again upon my sword, never to speak of this that you have heard. Swear by my sword. Ghost beneath. Swear. Hamlet. Well said, old mole. Canst work in the earth so fast, a worthy pioneer. Once more remove, good friends. Horatio. O oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. Hamlet, and therefore as a stranger give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, here, as before, never so help you mercy. How strange or odd soe'er I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think meet, to put an antic disposition on, that you, at such time seeing me, shall never with arms encumbered thus, or this head shake, or by pronouncing of some doubtful phrase as, Well, well, we know, or we could, and if we would, or if we list to speak, or there be, and if they might, or such ambiguous giving out to note, that you know aught of me, this is not to do. So grace and mercy at your most need help you, swear, ghost beneath, swear. Hamlet, rest, rest, perturbed spirit. So, gentlemen, with all my love I do commend me to you. And what so poor a man as Hamlet is, 
may do to express his love and friending to you god willing shall not lack let us go in together and still your fingers on your lips i pray the time is out of joint o oh, cursed spite that ever i was born to set it right nay come let's go together exit end of act one